Hey guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, My Girlfriend Has Slept With 100 Men and I'm Worried About Fidelity. Now guys, I chose this article today because this is a perfect example of a situation where a young guy is with a woman who is, as you're clearly going to see, uh, not exactly the best for him, not exactly girlfriend material. And I chose this because this guy, instead of going to a man to seek counsel and advice, this guy does what a lot of guys normally do. They go ask a woman her advice about another woman because in their mind, it's logical, makes sense. A woman's going to understand another woman, right? And I used to do the same crap when I was younger and it would always end disaster. So that's why I've warned you guys in previous videos, you ever have a concern about a woman or want to know about women or what, whatever it happens to be, always ask men. Ask older, experienced men because they'll give it to you directly because women won't do that. They'll, A, they don't usually understand what they emotionally respond to, so their answers aren't going to usually help you. B, they're not going to be direct with you the way a man's going to be and they're going to they're going to try to sugarcoat things so they don't hurt your feelings. They're more concerned about your feelings than actually helping you. And three, uh, a lot of times what they may say may be trying to help other women, so to speak, or how they'd want a guy to react in their situation with them not necessarily helping you and yours. And you're going to see as I go into this, guys, this woman he's with, I mean, she's trouble. And any guy would tell this guy to run for the hills. But this advice columnist, which I'm going to go over her response to his his questions and, and explain the situation, is very wishy-washy and doesn't exactly, in my opinion, help him in any way because she, she basically tells me to try to fix this girl. Big mistake. So I'm going to go into this article here and explain more about this as we go here. So again, he says, the article title is, My Girlfriend Has Slept With 100 Men, I'm Worried About Fidelity. Starts out saying, His Dilemma. My partner's relationships with other men is concerning me. She has admitted to sleeping with close to 100 men in the past, many for personal gain, including cash, gifts, holidays. I was shell-shocked, not so much that she participated, but that she confessed so blatantly. I also know that she has flirted with married men, enjoying dinner, and sharing a hotel bed with one of them. Okay, so let's, let's, let's start from the beginning. She's admitted to sleeping with close to 100 men. Guys, the old joke is, is that when you ask your average guy how many women he's slept with, whatever number he gives you, divide it by three. Because the odds are he's greatly exaggerated that number. You ask a woman how many men she slept with, and she usually you should, whatever number she gives you, in the back of your mind, you should multiply that times three. Because it's never really accurate. So... She may be telling him close to 100, but that's, given given how things are, it could be probably three times that. But here's the thing, guys. you got to understand, in this day and age, a good-looking woman, they're going to have a high body count. That's, that's just how things are now. You may not like it, but that may be a hard pill to swallow, but that is very common nowadays. My main issue here with this guy is her openly admitting that she's dated and hooked up with dudes for personal gain including, he said, cash, gifts, vacations, holidays, whatever you want to call it, and the fact that she openly admitted this. Guys, a lot of times people will tell you exactly who they are, but a lot of people don't listen. They don't want to hear it, especially guys with women like this, okay? And I'm going to guess you, obviously, she's hot, so this guy's completely blinded by her looks and blinded by the pussy, but at the end of the day, this guy, and you can just tell as he's writing this and as I go on, he's your typical nice guy that guaranteed she's milking for something guaranteed because he's not the type of guy that she respects or perceives as an alpha he was a type that she probably perceives a beta male provider as they're called okay and this guy is going to just get his heart stomped on and so i mean yeah i feel bad for the guy but you know if he was writing me instead of this advice columnist i'd tell him to run i'd tell him to leave her behind and never look back but this woman, as you're going to see, what she tries to convince him to do. Big mistake. But this chick is trouble. You can just see it in the first paragraph here. And it goes on to say, To me, it appears that as a woman who was abandoned by her father at a young age, she struggles to say no to men. So he's making excuses for her actions. She went on holiday with a female friend and came back with a new man's number in her phone, 
whom she messaged frequently and said I was being silly when I asked about him. Look at that, right there. Goes away on vacation with her friend, comes back with a guy's number. He can see this. She's texting him and she's just saying, oh, you're just being silly. No, he's not. But this guy is so weak. I mean, I'll give him credit, he's bringing it up. But, you know, any guy with any self-respect, A, wouldn't be with his broad. But two, he'd be out of there. But see how she's just bullshitting him because she knows. It's sad, but the guy, he it's going to take this hard lesson for him to wake up and realize. Goes on to say, she has no qualms about telling me that her male colleagues look at her in a way and suggest they're interested in her. She appears to thirst for this attention, perhaps subconsciously. All women love validation in various forms, but some cannot, cannot function without it. And this woman, as I can already tell here, because he mentioned her father, and you're going to hear more about it, has got daddy issues. And I did a video about women with daddy issues about a week and a half ago, and this is classic traits, okay? And those women, you cannot fix. They don't, they are not girlfriend or relationship material at all. At best, they're hookups, they're pump and dumps, one-nighters, that's it, get out of there. Uh -uh. It's not your job to fix her, but so many young guys think that they could be the one to fix a woman like this. No, you're not. <clears throat> uh uh. And if you think that, if you think that you're the one that's going to fix her and you try to shower her with love and affection and telling her how great she is, that's going to make her lose respect for you because a woman like this, in her mind, she's trash, which, well, let's be honest here, what, what she is, but you try telling someone who thinks that they're shit, that they're trash, that they're great. They don't see themselves that they'll lose respect for you for that. It's it's insane. I get it, but that's how it is. And any of you guys that have dealt with women like this, you know what I'm talking about. Run, 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 run. He goes on to say, her reaction to my concerns is normally anger. And so I avoid these topics, although inside me it's grating. Yeah, so he calls her on this stuff. She flies off the handle, gets mad, yells at him, probably throws a fit. And because this guy isn't strong enough, he then caves. He buckles, you know, because I don't want to make her mad. Do you think that's going to cause her to respect him, to see him in a way that she would want him, what way he'd want her to see him? No way. He goes on, I love her and have cut all ties with past flames. So she has nothing to worry about in terms of my faithfulness. But this is not reciprocated. Do I have it out for her or shrug and accept this as who she is? Oh my God. This this poor guy, he's in love with her and he's telling her that he's gotten rid of all his old flames and he's, you know, basically putting up with her crap and now he's basically saying, should I just accept this as who she is? Come on, man. I mean... God, I mean, if this guy was writing me right now instead of this female advice colonist, I would tell him, dude, get the hell out of there. This woman cannot love you, okay? She is going to just rip your heart apart and stomp it and stomp it into the ground, okay? And any of you guys that are in a situation like this, get out. You're not going to fix her. It's not your job to fix her. And you're going to end up completely heartbroken and made a fool of. And she's obviously cheating on this poor guy. Now here comes for the response from the advice columnist, the, the, the woman, the female you know, relationship guru, so to speak. Her name is Mariella. It says, Mariella replies, where to begin? Certainly not with a head count of past lovers, which means little or nothing and certainly has no real bearing on your current predicament. If you're judging a partner by the number of people that he slept with, then your priorities are seriously questionable. Well, that is a reasonable, that a high body count is a reasonable thing to have a concern about for a lot of people. It can go both ways. But also understand in this day and age, both men and women, but also a lot of women, they have high body counts. End of story, okay? And especially if they're good looking. You know, putting that aside, my main issue is, is all the lying, the cheating going on, her admitting she uses guys, married men, the whole nine yards there. That's... That's the main thing. There, there's no reason to be with somebody like this. Then again, I'm not impressed by the transactional nature, nature of some of her past choices either. The question you should be asking is what this woman is looking for and do you have the strength, courage, or indeed desire to help her find it? So right there, this is her roundabout way of saying, you know, do you want to help try to fix her? Do you want to try to help her? 
a really good advice columnist that, that understands relationships and women would say, no, run, get out of there. But now she's bringing up the, about trying to help her and fix her. Wrong. She goes on to say, she seems to need love, not in a clingy way, but in a manner that aims to serve an all-consuming hunger for someone to feed her emotional cravings. You tell me a lot about her, but very little about you and why your needs and desires should be so sublimated. What do you want from this relationship? Do you want to be tortured in this way by the desirability and unpredictability of another? All right, that's fair. She's saying, do you want to be tortured? Yeah, he's being tortured. But this guy probably also doesn't think highly of himself. I'm willing to bet you his probably mom was bossy and domineering and treated him like crap. And so this is what he's used to. Your girlfriend sounds like she has issues with self-esteem and misplaced ideas of how to gain self-worth. Well, too bad. It's not his problem. I'm presuming much of what you describe has happened in the past. In the past, yeah, and the present, lady. As L.P. Hartley famously said, this, the past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. What happened before you two got together may offer you context, but it's irrelevant when it comes to defining how she should behave in your relationship. Well, that's the thing. The way she behaved in the past is obviously going on in the present with this guy and will obviously continue on in the future. Women like this don't change. The woman's obviously screwed up. Definitely has got daddy issues. But again, this lady's sugarcoating. You see what I'm talking about? She's trying to, you know, earlier she mentioned about, do you want to be with her and fix her and all that? Oh, here we go. I feel sorry for your girlfriend because losing your, your father as a young girl is as painful as parting can get and instills in all the, the most resilient a sense of failure and lack of self-value that can remain throughout life. I know quite a few women, myself included, who took until their late 30s and 40s to shrug off that burden and realize that they don't have to shoulder the blame to carry the responsibility for a parent's absence. So she's feeling bad for the girl because daddy left because she had something like that. So it sounds like basically she's not she's going to put aside all the cheating, the using of guys for cash, gifts, vacations, hooking up with married men, basically being a, a, a train wreck to anybody that gets involved with it. But that's okay. I'm going to give her a pass because daddy issues. No, she's an adult who has adult responsibilities that are responsible for her actions. But this female advice columnist, See what she's doing here? This is why you go to a man. This is, Guys, this is why you go to a man to seek out advice like this because they're going to tell you how it is. They're not going to give this I feel bad for her crap. No. As you say, your partner seems to be trying to replace her father with any member of his sex and she thinks it has the potential to fill the space he left behind. It's not that she can't say no to men, but that she's under the illusion that sheer weight of numbers will ground her desire. Well, maybe that's the case, but who cares? You know, it's one thing if she's just, you know, hooks up with and has fun with a lot of guys. It's another thing, again, the lying, the cheating, the manipulation, all the using of guys, all that, being a home wrecker, that's different. There is no excuse for that. If she was just op very open saying, you know, I had a lot of relationships, I slept with a lot of guys, but, you know, guys do it too, that would be one thing. But that this is something different. In reality, and this is the female advice columnist going on here, in reality, the unconditional love she seeks is the kind only a parent can offer. You can't stop her mourning her father's absence, but you can possibly help her to see that's what she's looking, that's what she's looking for lies within her, and is for her alone to mend. See again, she's trying to get this guy to help this girl. No, you can't help her. You're wasting your time and you're only gonna make yourself crazy. And it's still, no matter what, these things always end badly for the guy. This isn't about the lovers she's had, could potentially have, or in the worst case scenario, continues to have. Oh, she's going to continue to have them. It's about a damaged little girl trying to replace her first love with a succession of alternatives. Again, bring out the, uh, the violin pity party for the girl, not for the guy. Have you have you guys heard anything in this article about the from the this this expert here 
addressing the fact that obviously she's lying to this guy. Have you heard her say anything about, you know, her using guys and sleeping with married men? Have you heard anything about that yet? I haven't heard anything about that yet. Has she said anything about, like, the way she gets angry and starts fights when he he rightfully has the right to call her on some of her things, like texting with this guy, getting this guy's number on vacation, all these things. No, she's focusing on the boo-hoo story for this girl. Again, this is why you consult men for this type of advice. You can be flattered that she has found enough of a home in you to slow the pace of her relentless quest, but as you observe, she's not done searching. Okay, finally she's admitted to something, but she's done it very nicely. That's why I asked in the beginning if you had the energy and commitment to try to help steer her to safe harbor. But the only way you can ever help anybody else is to first understand yourself. And I propose that's where you begin this quest. Try to understand your own motivation in enduring the insecurity she provokes. The insecurity that she provokes, she's flat out obvious about this. She's told the guy flat out in the beginning, not, not only the body count, the guys that she's supposedly hooked up with, which I guarantee is way more than that. Again, that'd be one thing. But openly admitting that she used guys for all these things. Married guys, all that, you know. And the fact that she's lying to him. Anytime he rightfully brings up, gets pissed off and throws a fit and all that. Oh, here we go. Try to understand your own motivation in enduring the insecurity she provokes. Oh, I read that. So, she's uh, calling him insecure for his rightful reaction. Guys, your gut feeling is everything. Remember that. While she works out her own priorities, what, what is obvious is that all this emotional fog leaves little room for clear view. So, neither of you knows yet if you have found what you're looking for. This woman is never going to find what she's looking for. And this guy, this guy needs to get out of there. End of story. Whether you can shape what you have into something less debilitating is a question I can't answer. But bigger romantic miracles have occurred. In answer to your question, I don't think you need to have it out, nor shrug and accept. Instead, I suggest a more imaginative journey where you learn a lot more about your own desire as a route to finding out whether you can or even want to keep up with hers. Major emotional investment, resilience, and commitment will be required along the way, but your adventure will be fruitless if you don't get to know the landscape of your own heart first. What's to learn here? He simply wants to have a probably drama-free relationship where he doesn't have to sleep with one eye open and check his girlfriend's text to see that she's cheating on him. And openly, the fact that she admitted in the past, all these guys, obviously cheating, using these guys, married, sleeping with married guys, all these things on and on and on. And obviously, the lies she's doing and getting the guy's phone number on vacation and texting him. You know, come on here. But she's not really addressing that. But again, asking him, is this what you want? He knows what he wants. He, he doesn't want a deceitful, lying girlfriend. So what she should be telling him is they're trying to ask, find what's within him to solve this little problem. Or what does he want? Simply, she should be telling him, get out, dude. You can't fix her. End of story. Move on. Try to find somebody much better. Okay? And also, get some balls. Stand up for yourself. Don't tolerate disrespect. That's what she should be telling him. So, like I said, guys, in the beginning... As I've said before in other videos, and it's been a while for you because I know a lot of new people in the last month or so, when it comes to the questions about women, dating, romance, all that shit, don't ask women for advice. I know it seems to make sense because you would think they'd understand themselves. They don't. And the answer they can get can be biased in terms of how they want a guy, how they want men to, to handle women in general for their own self-interest. Or two, they don't understand what they emotionally respond to, which a lot of women don't. Hence the women, you know, saying they want a really nice guy that treats them well, that, that opens them up, that opens up to them, does all these nice things. But then they get a guy who does that, and they end up dumping him for a guy who does none of that stuff. So, again, they, a lot of them don't understand what they emotionally respond to. Some have a clue, but most don't. And three, they don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't want to give you a direct answer the way a man would and risk upsetting you and hurting your feelings because generally women are, women are emotional, so they're going to sense things about feelings more than your typical guy would. So it's, you don't do that. So if this, guy was, if this guy wrote to me asking me my advice, I'd be very direct with him and say, get out, bro, out. 
okay? You can't fix her. You're going to have nothing but heartache. Move the hell on. End of story. You know, because so many guys have had women in varying degrees like this. And it ain't fun, and you're not going to change her. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know your experiences in varying degrees with women just like this. Let me know. Were you able to fix them? How did that turn out for you? And also let me know about the whole, your experience with seeking advice from women when you're younger and less experienced and how that blew up in your face. Because it happened to me. I used to be that guy when I was much younger, my teens and 20s. I didn't know any better and it never worked out. So I'm telling this to you guys so you guys can benefit from my, all my fuck ups when I was younger. So, all right guys, that's it for today. Again, be sure to comment down below and be sure to like the video, share with your friends and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.